the New York Times had a very big headline one day about the mass grave and all these murdered children in the city of Kamloops, which begins my, my story. And they haven't retracted the story. They modified it a little bit, but they haven't retracted it. There were no bodies found. There never have been any bodies found. So, so my story, it's a, to me, it's very provincial, parochial. It's not earth-shattering. And yet, news of how bad Canada was and how bad our system was, how bad our democracy was, went around the world. So people everywhere knew about Canada apparently murdering Indigenous people, its Native people. And, and it's... Uh, so it's kind of interesting. You ask yourself, well, why would they want to discredit all our institutions? Why would they want to think that the Canada that, that I grew up in and others is so bad? And, and of course, I'm the first to admit that we can always reform our institutions. We can always do better. But that's not what these, I think, neo-communists are, are looking at. They They want to throw it all out. It's decolonization. It's deconstructionism, it's de-everything, it's taking away and starting again. And then you look at their ideas and all their ideas is shifting the, you know, the deck chairs in the Titanic. It's, it's this idea that, oh, we just need different people at the top. We need a different race of people. We need a different religion. We do need, and, and, uh, and then everything's going to be fine. Well, that, that doesn't offer us any hope whatsoever. I think if we destroy these institutions in the Western world, and Canada has long been a very free country, there, what guarantee is there that we're going to continue to live in a free country? What Trudeau has done since being elected in 2015 is take away people's freedoms. He's a guy that calls anybody who disagrees with him a racist, misogynist, alien, just... It just, it's just an interesting thing. It's just openly defamatory. We're anti this and anti that. If we hold on to what we consider to be values, which are democratic and rational, part of the enlightenment. I was reading the other day that there is a government directive in the province where I live, British Columbia, but it's a, I've also heard that it's right across Canada of words that we're no longer supposed to use. And I'm not talking about words like manhole or, or mankind. I'm talking about words like Canada. Apparently the word Canada and the word British Columbia um, are no longer um, acceptable because it doesn't represent, because Canada is indigenous. Therefore, it, it really should be called something else. And a lot of people use the, the, the absurd term Turtle Island is though Canada is an island, and of course it doesn't look like a turtle. It's just nonsense. And British Columbia apparently doesn't make recent immigrants comfortable because it has the word British in it, and then has the word Columbus. Now, if I may just say quickly, one of the things that an education does provide one with is an understanding of the importance of of history in understanding the modern world. If you take the British out of British Columbia then we're taking out part of our past. And it was the British that formed the, the colony um, in, in, in 1858, the, the province in 1871. It was the British. This Everything about British Columbia, including our capital city, Victoria, is British. Now, I know, obviously, other groups had a role with Indigenous people, Chinese working on our railways. Uh, the French were the first Europeans to get out to the West. So, of course, there are many different people, but the British had the lead role. And then, of course, for Columbia, if it weren't for Columbus, it would have been a lot later that a third, the Americas, a third of the world would have been discovered. So what, what I found in communism, and I'm no expert, I'm not Eastern European like some of my friends who may be watching this, um, who have a, a closer understanding of, of what it was like to live under an authoritarian regime. But one thing I do know is it's Orwellian. That people work to whoever controls the the, the old expression. You know, the, the whoever controls um, the present controls the past, and whoever controls the past controls the future. And I and I think controlling the past is easier if you can rewrite it 
in a way that serves common interests. So what Trudeau and a lot of these post-nationalists do, and I think people, I think he's he's a guy who, who is, from a young age, he's been fascinated by communism. His family is very close to the Castro family. He went to the funeral of, of Castro's brother. His father was very close to Fidel Castro. The, the, this, you know, Justin Trudeau praising at one time the Chinese government for its, for its basic dictatorship. Um, so it's, it's really quite a disturbing thing. But just again, from my perspective, is a little bit of a nobody. Um, but someone who has some authority because I, I have a doctorate and I've lived a long time and I understand well the educational history of our country, that what Trudeau is doing, not just with education, but in other fields, what he's doing is he's changing people's understanding of it to serve his end, to show that everything's broken. Therefore, you need to have someone like me, you know, this tall white savior who's going to come in with his nice smile and his fancy socks, follow me, everybody. And all he's doing is building on divisions and resentments and I think he's full, he's going to create ultimately civil war. Um, if he, not that he's going to last in power, but if he did last in power, because he's got people, groups of people. I, a beautiful expression I read yesterday saying that our first commitment ought to be to all humans. Our second commitment ought to, this is a book from, you might have Helen Puckrose and James Lindsay wrote the cynical theories. But the... Um, but it was this idea that our first commitment is to all of us and our second commitment to the different groups, the different cultural groups, religious groups, whatever, um, ideological groups. But it's been reversed with people at Trudeau. That what it is, it's all commitment to certain groups based on, on absurd things like race because we're all mixed and, and um, there's no way of really deciding what is a pure race or how one person is different genetically from another person. And it's just anyhow, nonsense. But I just find it quite an interesting thing that it's a very much a, a program of division.